Good morning, my name is Dolores Ordóñez. Uh, I'm from the technical director of Any Solution. I'm representing the Spanish National Hub of Gaia X. Thank you very much. And hello, I'm Jana Sinibor from Finnish Innovation Fund Citra, representing the Finnish Gaia X Hub. Hi, good morning. So, my name is Marine de Suri, and I am the Hub Funds coordinator. I am also mission director in SIGREF which is a non-profit organization of users of digital services across all business sectors. I'm Jelle Hoedemakers from Belgium, um, and I work for Agoria, the Technology Industry Federation in Belgium. And of course, I'm here because from the side of Agoria, we are organizing the Gaia X Hub in uh, Belgium. Hi, I'm Sasha Bailey from, the, from Lux Innovation. I'm the CEO. Um, Lux Innovation is Luxembourg's national innovation agency, and we host the Luxembourg Gaia X Hub. Good morning. My name is Paolo Traverso. I'm director at FBK and head of the marketing strategy and business development. FBK is a RTO, research and technology organization, more than 600 people. And we are one of the three founders of the Italian Gaia X National Hub. Hello there. I'm Peter. Um, I work for Architect, which is the German National Academy of Science and Engineering. Well, and I'm uh, the coordinator of the Gaia X Hub here in Germany. Good morning to everyone. Um, thank you for tuning in today to our GaiaX session on GaiaX Hubs, where we would like to inform you um, and give an insight into why we have GaiaX Hubs, what role they play in GaiaX, and how they operate. Um, we uh, have first introduced the GaiaX Hub concept at the GaiaX Summit last year, uh, so this is a bit of a tradition now, I think. And um, considering that we've uh, got a tight ship to run here, I would suggest that we go straight into the questions. So, um, Sasha, um, tell me, why do we need GAIA-X hubs? Well, I think what we've seen um, is that the GAIA-X has generated a, a real European momentum and has brought this really to the global level. Uh, it brings together the public and private entities, big players, small companies, research institutes. But what's really important is that we look at the, and we take in the local data ecosystem, um, because the local data ecosystems, they are in fact a mirror. They're a microcosm of the much, much faster European data spaces. So the GAIA-X hubs are there really to identify and they explore the data challenges at a, at a local, at a regional level. And in a way, they are a, a testing ground for the challenges of data across Europe as a whole and to ensure that this free flow of data within a secure, open, and trusted European network infrastructure can be assured. And that's why the GAIA-X hubs are so important. That implies a decentralized and federated approach uh, for GAIA-X hubs. Martina, would you like to elaborate on that? The national GAIA-X hubs are the voice of the local ecosystems, using GAIA-X to leverage the true potential of a data economy and people in national sector specific working groups and stimulate the local data ecosystem is the primary task of GAIA-X hubs. We do this by gathering the requirements of, from the users, industry, research, public sectors, individuals, and setting up common European projects. Well, besides this uh, technology-centric approach, why do you think it makes sense to do this, uh, to do the gathering on a national or regional level? Jana, what are your thoughts on that in Finland? Yeah, yesterday we heard that we need to have a bold vision but humble execution. And I think that means that we need to connect with existing initiatives and projects at local level and leverage uh, the existing work and build on that uh, and try to connect GAIA-X together with the local communities. This is people business and it's people that connect, uh, not a technology. That's true, that's true. Um, Yellow, with that in mind, um, we have to, of course, avoid parallelism and to have different developments in different countries. So how does this fall into place on a European level or on a global level in the future? How can we avoid creating mass confusion? Yeah, well, Peter, of course, we don't want to have any mass confusion. And to avoid that, 
we need structures in place that facilitate exchange and cooperation. So in that regard, all of our national uh, vertical working groups, they converge at the, the European level into European vertical ecosystems that are orchestrated by the Data Space Business Committee within the Gaia-X Association. So it is there that we share our activities, we share our projects, and we will formulate requirements towards Gaia-X. However, a solid national buy-in and determination will be required to drive this project forward at the European level which is possible through the solid routes provided by the hubs. I like to think actually that the national hubs are the glue, eh? which aim to bring together local data spaces and make them into European ones. So rather than focusing on creating data spaces top down, we will make them rise bottom up. And that means we have to raise awareness about Gaia-X and its benefits. So this is one of the key responsibilities of Gaia-X hubs creating clarity and transparency about what Gaia-X is and what it aims to do in the local communities. Thank you. Thank you. Um, speaking of creating transparency and raising awareness, um, a study conducted by the German BDI, the, the Association of the uh, Industry here in Germany, has revealed that only 6% of all companies actually knew about Gaia-X and what its goals and aims are. That, of course, has to change. Dolores, what do you think, um, what role can a hub play, especially in this, uh, in this aspect um, in the future? Thanks, Peter. Uh, it can play a very important role. Indeed, marketing has to be uh, specific to its audience. Therefore, some value propositions of Gaia X must be tailored to the specific environments they are going to be efficient in. Economic realities, uh, the digital and otherwise, differ from region to another. Here we have a, a big example, and even more so between countries. So that must be factored into any conceptualization of Gaia-X value propositions. And therefore, we need grassroots organizations with a native understanding of the communities. For example, the Gaia-X hubs. Thank you. Paolo, how do you think this should influence how we tackle information dissemination in countries? How are our hubs going to use uh, to make use of their Localness. Yeah, Peter, it's important to raise a general awareness of Gaia X and what we are doing, providing specific information to specific stakeholders. So it's easier to do this at the national level. So to identify stakeholders, big companies, small medium enterprises, research institutions, associations, and so on at the national level, and then use the existing network at that level. This will provide a better way of raising awareness, I believe. That is completely right. Now, with all of this in mind, we now have a, I hope, clear picture of why we need Gaia-X up to bring Gaia-X to life. Now, Marine, how did you first set up to, uh, to launch the Gaia-X up in France? Well, the French Ministry of Economy and Finance has asked SIGREF to be involved in the Franco-German discussions to build Gaia-X since November 2019. So the purpose was to represent the interests of users of digital services companies and to meet their needs. Uh, indeed, Gaia-X is data-driven and business-driven, as has been pointed out on several occasions in the summit. Uh, we have then regularly provided information of the progress of GAIA-X, and that is why some stakeholders of sectorial, such as banking and insurance, energy, mobility, education and skills, and so on, asked us to launch working groups. SIGREF and then the Hub France organizes collective intelligence workshops to make them think about what they can get from sharing data in a secure and trusted way that provides analytical, computational, and AI capabilities and fosters innovation. And the Hub France has also organized three plenary sessions to share the actuality of GAIA-X and the work and the roadmap of these working groups. And such events, which gathered between uh, 500 and uh, 700 participants, have triggered the reflection of new sectors, and today the Hub France incubates 12 working groups, seven and soon eight of which work at the European level. 
Okay, uh, we have a couple of questions incoming, so I would like us to go around the round table on the, on the basis of these questions. So the first question is, what role of the Gaia-X will play? Uh, will they only be an organization or will they also be a kind of platform with the central catalog function? If we can answer that. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Sorry, I yes. didn't get that. Uh, what role will the Gaia-X hubs play? Will they be an organization or will they also be kind of a platform with a central catalog function? No, the central catalog functions will be provided by Gaia-X itself. The hubs, per se, are a community management and stakeholder management um, offering that allows for companies and interested parties to come together and um, and exchange on how GaiaX can be used to leverage the potential of a data economy. The next question is, what kind of services and support can companies and citizens receive from each GaiaX hub, for example? We can go around the table and we can be concise in our responses. Yes. At least uh, we, the Finnish hub, work as information yeah. brokers yeah. Uh, and connect uh, what's happening in the broader level to the local level. And then, of course, these domain working groups health, uh, circular economy, those are very important uh, where, we, where we form our, our action plans. Just can I add? Yes, go ahead. Um, I believe that one of the main tasks of the hub is really uh, to act uh, as an incubator in a sense of sense and facilitator, uh, providing uh, um, a proposing partner the means to present uh, their idea and gather interest from also from uh, hub uh, partners. Uh, and uh, in this way, we can really understand the objectives, the work plan, uh, the, the expected return on investment of all uh, the companies, of all the institutions that will, uh, uh, that will be part of the national hub. Another question is the following. Have hubs already envisioned new local or inter-European ecosystems like Athena X? For example, if I can, uh, if I may, uh, how Slovakia has attitude towards the European idea behind Gaia X and also Catena X. In Slovakia, this kind of deep understanding that we are really European and we want to have a strong competitive Europe. This understanding that we have to do it all together is crucial. That fact that Europe is made up of several different countries must be used to have an advantage in the global market. And we have to understand and to learn that this is diversity, this variance of approaches, and all, out a lot of kind of differences will bring us to the new innovative common ideas, which we are able to transform to the real concrete projects for our companies, for our societies. We could do it only by deep cooperation between all of us. I believe that Europe is the only one able to guarantee the standards of living for our society and next generations, despite the various global challenges, such as the climate change, digital world, long-term labor market challenges, and also no fair trade or global market rules. As a little country, Slovakia understood this point very quickly. Nobody will achieve this goal of our future alone. This is the reason why to be with Katina X and also Kaya X. Another question which is quite a generic question that has just come in. Uh, what is the relationship between the hubs and the ISBL? Are the hubs involved in the DSPC? Uh, maybe I can answer there. Uh, yeah, we are, the hubs are coming together. So in hubs, we have national working groups at the national level We're working on data spaces. And this is all converging uh, um, within the data space business committee. So the data space business committee is the link between the Gaia X hubs and the Gaia X association. Uh, one more uh, incoming question. It's, it's clear that and everyone is interested in, in this round table. So we must be doing something right. Mm -hmm. uh, so thank you for your patience and understanding as we are receiving um, real-time questions. Uh, so can you give some advice to countries 
who do not yet have official hubs, but they would indeed be interested to join this initiative. Um, how to approach and discuss uh, with their governments on the importance of starting up and how can they even reach out to Gaia-X. Uh, you're all hub coordinators, you've gone through the process. So what would be the key steps, for instance, to integrate themselves and even create uh, their hub, if interested? Thank you. Maybe I can jump in on that one. Um, in, in, in our case, in Luxembourg, what we did, and obviously we're a small country, um, but we really already had uh, an innovation agency, which was there actually as a non uh, non-for-profit entity uh, to understand and work already with the companies, with different business federations, with research organizations, to understand where the needs of innovation are in the future and to help companies to move forward and to connect them with research. So what you do in your own ecosystems is you look at already who are the key actors already on the ground who are close to business, who are close to industry, who are close to research and bring them together. And we modeled our hub, um, which is now hosted within our innovation agency, we modeled it on the German, uh, German model that they set up. So that was really important. And I'd like to thank Germany actually for paving the path out for us. That was extremely helpful. So then we set up, uh, we, we set up a, a Gaia-X hub within Lux Innovation. We hired a Gaia-X coordinator, who's also a special advisor on all around data economy so that we can explain it properly to companies what's, whenever it's relevant for them. This hub coordinator, he runs the operations. Uh, he acts as a point, point of contact. And then we have a hub steering committee above, which is actually brings together those public and private organizations that have a specific use case around the data space. That's extremely important. It's really concrete, hands-on stuff when we talk about the local data ecosystem. And then there's also an overall stakeholder group uh, of ministries and research organizations and business federations that need to be keep, kept informed and also regularly consulted. So this is how we, we structured it. And it's really doable. Uh, we've managed it. Um, other colleagues around the table here have all managed it. And it's creating a real momentum. And above all is that we are in intense exchange among each other sharing experiences. It's really hands-on and it's a very human connection amongst us and that is really, really helpful. So we welcome any others who are uh, really looking at how to do this concretely. Um, you're also the forefront runners of, of Gaia-X because the national Gaia-X hubs are in fact uh, the local voice, the local ecosystem on how we could use uh, Gaia-X to leverage the true potential of a data economy. So if you were to advise any hub or potential hub that would be interested to join us, how would you define your cooperation, obviously, with Gaia-X, and what would be the added value on your end to join Gaia-X? Well, if I may, uh... The first thing is to, to have clear which are the, the specific challenges that lo local ecosystems are facing. So it's very important to know which are the, the real needs at the level of each country to, to face in terms of the uh, data ecosystems. Uh, I can tell you about the, the situation in Spain. So we had some entities that were already members of gaia -X, and then we started this movement thanks uh, to the uh, Ministry of Economic Affairs and Digital Transformation, which were like the, the pushing of this uh, action. And then we are creating an association in which public and private entities, big and small companies, we are working together. But it's also very important to have in mind which are the main um, issues, the main sectors, which are the targets that we are going to do within uh, gaia -X. For example, in Spain, we want to focus on tourism due to the, the impact of tourism in our, in our economy. And of course, we want to, want to, to lead the tourism data spaces, but also we can offer a knowledge on health. Each country has to check which are their forces and how can they contribute also to gaia -X. In terms of gaia -X, I think as a country, it's very easy to join because we have already set up the structures. So it's just a matter of connections. Mm -hmm. um, on another point, we could see the hubs are uh, similar, we could characterize hubs as being a glue, <laughs> you know, uh, which aim to bring together 
uh, the local data spaces and then make European ones. What is the next step from here? Uh, yes, I, go ahead. Say, I believe it's very important that we really contribute to launch uh, concrete uh, projects, uh, use cases, uh, business cases uh, in each hub that are highly connected to <laughs> other projects uh, in uh, uh, different hubs so that we really create uh, European uh, data spaces. For instance, uh, we in Italy are launching a concrete uh, use case involving private companies like, in, in the case of health data space, uh, so private companies like pharma, uh, public uh, healthcare system, uh, and those research institutes that uh, uh, allow to create uh, a, a data spaces for health that can be connected with all the other projects uh, around Europe. I believe this is something that we should really do as soon as possible, because this will give really a concreteness to our hubs and to our to Gaia X at all. I may add to this, I, I, I think it's going to come down to how are we going to use Gaia X to bring a data economy that's based on um, on data sovereignty and, um, and the principles that GAIAC stands for, how can we bring this to life? And, and that's where the hubs really come into play. Because in the end, GAIAC is always going to be uh, domain agnostic, and the people who use and develop GAIAC, frankly, in most of the time, they don't know how to make money using GAIAC. And to enable the, the communities that are already there um, to use GAIAC to their benefit, this is going to be crucial over the next couple of months and years and in the future in general. What I is that? Just would like, I, yes, I just please. would like to add something, um, which is that uh, effectively, uh, we really need to go at the European uh, level. And uh, most of the um, working group uh, now uh, are mo have moved from think tank uh, to do tanks. In fact, uh, they have uh, already uh, uh, written the position paper and share this at the European level. But now we are in the implementation phase and uh, we need to, to, to have uh, concrete use cases, concrete quick wins to show that it works and that we need to continue to work all together. And I think we've been working like one year together. We come from the different backgrounds. Uh, we can help with very hands-on help. We need to build those European flagship initiatives. And sometimes the processes aren't there just perfect, but uh, together with our connections, I'm sure we can tailor and help these common European flagship use cases to, to emerge. So uh, giving continuation to cutting X and, and this different, we need to create more we are here to help. And as a final uh, comment, we will receive a number of questions. So in the next few days, we will pro probably need to send you all these questions and then go back to our press, our attendees. We're having a lot of people uh, requesting a number of questions. But as a final question um, or statement, as I would say, what does it mean for each one of you that um, the reasoning and the coordination behind the hubs is we are aiming to focus on creating um, uh, data spaces from a bottom-up approach rather than a top-down approach. Wh how is this related to the consistency of how uh, Gaia-X was even created in the first place? What does it mean for you? If I may jump in on that, I think it's absolutely crucial because it's only by taking this bottom-up approach as it's complementary to the coordination top-down one, it's really important to get the buy-in locally. It's about ownership. And ownership only comes when you have this bottom-up understanding from the ground, from those who are really concretely involved and they are, and they are listened to and understood and the requirements are then brought together. And that's what this is all about. So that's why this bottom-up is really important. I think it's the best way to generate trust and confidence. So because you are really taking into account which are the real needs of the local ecosystems, and especially now to generate this that economy that will help uh, also uh, Europe for the economic recovery. And as a final statement, if we were uh, to use one word, each one of you, that could define uh, what a hub is, I would start with trust. How would you continue? 
Collaboration. Together. Together. Understanding. Security future. Security future. Exchange. Incubation. Incubation. Interoperability. Let's bring some keywords up front. Exchange. Data sharing. Data sharing. More. Mutual learning. Multi learning. Yes. With Significant support. impact of the national and the European economy. Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> and human togetherness, right? <laughs> Unity, streamlining, optimization. Thank you very much.